Do you know how powerful you are? Welcome to the Risepreneurs Podcast. Welcome to Risepreneurs. Reshaping and elevating your mindset to help you achieve what you believe. Sometimes we don't even see our own greatness. You can't be what you can't see. And connecting black cultures to build a community of talent and success. Black people need to realize that they are assets. You are an asset. When we rise, you rise. Come together as a group. This is Risepreneurs with Terrell Simmons. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. You could be any place in the world, but you're here with me, and I greatly appreciate that. So in this episode, I get to talk to Hani Gabriel, and actually Hani is now on our social media team, and he's an amazing young man, and I love his story because he's young, and he started off very early in his career with this entrepreneurial spirit was referred to him through uh shola of course (laughs) shola knows everybody as you can see his story is interesting too because i remember talking to him because his earlier life he started in nigeria but currently in the uk and hopefully you get to hear some of that story in this interview and as we continue to have him on the team and you know maybe i can get him to come back on again and share a little bit more of that journey as he continues his growth with us and he's just this young vibrant up-and-comer in the world of marketing and starting as an apprentice marketer at the age of 17 he kind of put his youth and culture into the forefront of his work and uh contributes to social media at a magnificent level and other digital marketing responsibilities for our team and uh you know I think when he first started his career, he was with a group of people that were much older than him and they didn't understand the world of social media and and digital marketing. So like we always kind of tend to do, we stereotype and say, hey, give it to the young kid. He could do it. And he found his way through that and learned a lot of good lessons in his career. And uh, some of those lessons I've been able to steal nuggets from him. And then we kind of help each other grow in essence, back and forth. He's often described by his colleagues as hardworking, enthusiastic, real team player. And, you know, Hani aspires to start his own digital marketing agency and further his education by achieving and becoming a CIM chartered marketer member. So with that being said, without any further ado, I want to welcome you to another episode. And here is Hani Gabriel, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's do it. Welcome to another episode of Rise Panoise. In the building today, we got my man, Honey. Honey, look, you know, we're just going to jump straight into it. First of all, like, wait, how did we meet, Honey? Let's give people a little bit of background. So I met you through a uh, work colleague of yours, Shola. Um, yeah. I've known Shola since I was like a little kid, like seven, six. She and my mom back in Nigeria, that's where I was born and brought up. They're working together over there. Okay. And she she messaged my mom. She's like, Hey, I'm looking for, you know, some guy to help with social media and that kind of thing. Honey does that, right? So I was like, Yeah. So uh yeah. that's I think that's that initial meeting through her and uh here we are yeah. today. Oh man. So wait, I just realized that you guys grew up together like when did you leave Nigeria? Was it in your so younger years or when you got older? So I'm twenty now. And hey. I left Nigeria. I was born and brought up there in 2010. Okay. So next month, December, will be 10 years since I okay. moved to the UK. That's where I live now. So hey. literally, it will be half my life in Nigeria, half my life in the UK. And it's <laughs> it's a nice blend because it's so completely different cultures. Yeah. So it's nice to experience both yeah. in my childhood and now totally, early totally. adulthood. Nice. Yeah, that might serve you well once you start doing more international business and so forth, which I know you are because you're a superstar. (laughs) (laughs) Not yet. yet. uh, (laughs) And now I'm just blessed to be able to work with you and have you on this Rise Panora's journey and help us with our social media. And, you know, when I created this podcast, I had the idea of also helping with other individuals that are going through their career change, whether it be through entrepreneurship or just trying to find a career that they love. And a lot of things that I see young folks have a hard time doing is 
like learning different lessons along the way and then their journey to careers or seeing people just doing different types of careers that are out there because you know our parents often tell us especially if you grew up in nigeria or nigerian parents because my dad was nigerian mm-hmm. like you're going to be either one of four things you're going to be a doctor a lawyer or an engineer <laughs> <laughs> definitely it's 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 still that mindset now i think where especially with african parents and black parents where it's like mm-hmm. education it's the way it's the only way that's where you get your future mm-hmm. and you know they are right to a certain degree so yeah, um, to but a certain degree because I would say I've, that's what they know. They yeah. know what they know. That's what they know. But it's I think nowadays it's quite the system has changed a little bit. There's so many different options where you don't have to go to university, you don't have to go to a college to necessarily land a good job or get a decent education. So um I definitely think yeah. I've, if you would have and asked me when I, I was a kid, I'm yeah, if you would ask me if I was a kid like what I wanted to do, like I didn't have a straightforward idea of yeah i want to be a doctor or yeah i want to be an engineer it's just sort of been like i don't know what i want to do i've always been sort of a creative yeah. person like tech savvy and i always wanted to do that mm-hmm. and i think i've sort of explored that and gonna get into that so it's been quite yeah. quite a lesson yeah you know i think it's cool too your parents seems like they allowed you the room to explore that did they like did they encourage you to try new things or were they were like oh no you need to go to university <laughs> no it's always been like my mom is very on it and very encouraging my dad always says to me like just you know you can still go you can still go to university and i'm happy now that i'm at <laughs> i'm at the point where i can go if i wanted to so it's always uh-huh. nice to have that yeah but now what i've always what been like the kind job? of person to so no, 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 i wait, started wait. as a your... i was gonna say as a kid, like I was always encouraged to pick up new things and try new things, mm-hmm. but I was very stubborn. Like I'd pick something up, do it for a few weeks or three months, and then I'll drop it. So I was very supportive <laughs> in that regard. <laughs> Wait, did you do it because you were bored or because you just didn't like it? Or are you like, you just. Ah, like, it's ah, different. You know, like, for me. it was like, yeah, like I probably watched like the Karate Kid. And I was like, yeah, I want to learn how to do karate. And then I start training. I'm like, oh too much i can't do this anymore <laughs> or want to want to learn how to do like swimming like i was really good at swimming as a kid and i really love swimming mm-hmm. and now i just don't do it anymore i just just left it uh, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. it's these like side activities not really career focused but they do help mm-hmm. you and they, they develop good work ethic and things like that because there is challenges yeah. in those kind of activities yeah yeah absolutely there is now what was your first job just out of curiosity so in the uk college is like the latest stage of high school. So you finish mm-hmm. high school at 16 and you go to college for two years and then you get the requirements to go to university. So I did the first year of uh, A-levels and I didn't pass all my grades. So it would have been like, you would have been held back a year. So I thought, yeah. this isn't for me. And I found a job as an apprentice in marketing, uh-huh. a digital marketing apprentice for a construction company suppliers. They supply like, big cranes and lifts for helping people work high uh-huh. and that was my first ever job first ever like nine to five working in an office environment and i was yeah. fresh 17 year old thrown into the working world no experience no mentor no guy no nothing uh-huh. it was uh it was quite a learning curve like i remember you know work finishes 5 p.m but me packing my bag standing uh-huh. by the door like two minutes to go <laughs> to go home because i didn't know any better because that's that's the mindset in school of like you get in you get out and so it's been quite interesting to learn you know skills like that to develop into a working world that's quite a learning curve so what would you say like some of the things you learned from your first job that really helped you throughout your career and setting up your side business and doing other gigs as you move forward i think one of the most important lessons i learned early on was Not just to say yes to everything and accept what's going on. Like, it's okay to challenge things. Like, it's okay to assert yourself in situations where you don't feel comfortable in. Like, I remember I would accept I was doing other people's jobs, you know, just to feel like I was important or worth something when in reality it wasn't really fair on myself. So I think it's important to assert yourself in situations where. I agree. And then, you know what? And I think. There's some lessons to be learned from that because I think you learned good work ethic. I think there was some benefits to that too. I mean, it is just me riffing from the outside looking in. 
you could probably tell me better <laughs> what you, you learned best <laughs> when it comes to that. So seems like my mic is going in and out, but <laughs> hopefully it'll be. All right. So we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We had some technical difficulties, but we're going to try to figure that out when we get the edits back later. We might leave it natural. We, we don't know what we're going to do, but <laughs> all right. So let's jump into it. What is some advice you would give someone who would like to start a career in your industry? Like they wanted to get into doing social media marketing and so forth. What advice would you give that young person? I would say take advantage of your youth. You know, I'm only 20 right. and I've been very lucky to grow up in a, in the social media age. There. You know, I've grown up with social media. Like I think when you were, you know, it's fairly new. So all these yeah. apps and stuff I've used as a kid now using as an adult in a business sort of sense. And you've already got that key skills that adults now are only learning to use. So mm -hmm. you've already got that knowledge and applying that in a way to develop a business or develop your own brand is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is very important. Now, do you feel like, because I hear this all the time with millennials and younger folks, there's like, like older people automatically assume that we're just like social media savvy, but some people are like, I, I don't even, I don't even do social media like that. <laughs> and then when I go into work at a job, they give me all the social media projects and I don't really like social media. So I think this should be given to somebody else who enjoys it and wants to do this. <laughs> yeah. Like I definitely found that at my first job, it was sort of like, it was an afterthought almost. Yes. It was a, I was working for a, a business to business company, which social media sometimes isn't, the best for but it still is right. important so it was kind of like tossed aside like oh the youngins can do it they they right. know it more than us <laughs> but i would say it's there's very distinct differences between your own personal social media and mm -hmm. social media for in a business sense right. like if you look at my own personal social media i'm just like to use it to have fun mess right. around and enjoy myself that's what it's there for but when it comes to a business one business-minded you know, social media, that can be more targeted and you can develop more skills and apply different campaigns and thoughts and the ideas. Yeah, I must say, generate money. Yeah. yeah, I must say when I sat down with you, you gave me the whole overview of the social media. Like I didn't really realize all the intricacies that go into it. And you gave me the breakdown. I was like, man, this kid knows his stuff. You know, I <laughs> you already lost me. So, hey, you take the will. Tell me what I need to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, especially when it comes to a brand, I think everyone needs to get involved. Everyone needs to be involved in some sort of capacity. Like, uh -huh. you see stuff now where CEOs are more hands-on involved. Like, if you look at, like, um, Elon Musk, he's tweeting all the time. He's his own mm -hmm. social media guy. If you, yeah. see, you see Elon Musk on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, and you immediately think of uh, yeah. Tesla. There. You, know? you know what I also think of when I see Elon Musk? I think of Iron Man, honestly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's a he's, real he's life Tony Starks. It, he's developed that image for himself. He's you know, he's putting him out, he's putting himself out there. Like he'll yeah. he can tweet something and the stocks can jump up and down. That's how you know, that's how crazy it is. Well yeah. obviously that's a very extreme <laughs> sense of the world. But then you also get in into like politics and stuff with you see, with the recent uh, elections and what President Trump's been doing for the past four years, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's yeah. a powerful tool and it can be used as a powerful weapon. And uh -huh. I think learning how to use it in an effective way is, is very important nowadays. Yeah. Now, well, on that same breath and kind of talking about the power of social media, like, what do you think the future has in store for your industry when you look at social media marketing? Like, what does that look like as we go into the future? It's, it's since now we realize there's so much power in this thing and how people are going to probably use it or how the industry is going to change. I think social media is getting to the point now, especially with the big platforms that you can think of, like your mm. Instagrams, your Facebooks, your Twitters. There is no innovation anymore. It's just sort of copying each other in niche ideas. Like I remember Snapchat was the first sort of mm -hmm. social media to have temporary, you know, posts, 24 hours, and then it'll go. And then Instagram had Instagram stories. Now there's mm -hmm. Facebook stories. And now there's recently Twitter fleets. So they're all just going to sort of copy on each other. Oh, he's got a good idea. We can do right. that. 
So there oh. is no there is no innovation anymore. It's dying out. And with Actually, that, yeah. I found this new splitting a Twitter fleet. Have you heard of Clubhouse? Clubhouse now. No, there's this new social media app called Clubhouse. I'm gonna have to show it to you. And it just used strictly voice. It's like Twitter with just voice. voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with the, similar to like Twitter fleet, but and that's how people jump into rooms and conversate with each other and connect with each other uh. all over the world. But it's in beta and it's private. It's like invite only. You can you can't do you have iPhone? I've got an iPhone, yeah. Okay, we'll we'll chat after this. Is is a pri- <laughs> my private invite only, and it's it is. I like what is this? It's like a new revolution. So of, it's like of, a it's like a big uh, Zoom call, but you can only see a voice, right? So yeah, like that. yeah, something well, like that. Interesting. Yeah, and, and yeah, like, I like that. The, like I just got invited to it the other day, and already I've seen celebrities in there. Like Oprah was in there talking to people. <laughs> got like. <laughs> All these different celebrities and people, VCs and Fortune 500 owners of companies talking, permeating ideas and connecting with people. I'm like, what the heck is going on in here? (laughs) (laughs) You're just like getting a kind of, whoa, what's going on? (laughs) Yeah. We'll talk after this. I'll show you because you got to, you got to. I need to see that. I need to see that. Yeah. So, so what projects are you currently working on? I know you're working on Raspreneurs. Wait, first of all, what made you come on the Raspreneurs? I'm just curious because I know I know Shola when she she has a way of selling things and then so, getting people involved with things. <laughs> <laughs> so the way uh, Shola described it and the way you spoke about it completely different. But from uh-huh. what I understand, it's it's something that I would be interested in. That's that's the whole reason why I took you know I wanted to be on board with this and be part but, of it. There is, you know, I was seeing, thinking the other day, in the UK, I don't see any black-owned businesses. It's normally mm-hmm. white-owned or Middle East and Asian-owned. And I was yeah. thinking, why, why is that the case? Like, you know, something like this is useful, not just for people in the US or the UK, but worldwide. Anyone could be an entrepreneur. Why can't it be, why can't it be us? So yeah. This platform will, I think, will help that. Push yeah, the case. will help elevate that because I want to highlight all it. Because I like once I fell into entrepreneurship, I met so many amazing black entrepreneurs out there. The stories weren't being told, or they, or when they got to a point where they ever able to sustain themselves, like their struggle, their story, the everything they've been through, and it's not only one inspiring, probably heartbreaking, emotional, but also just to see them come out of the like a phoenix out of the fire yeah. and be able to just do amazing stuff and just like i coined in the phrase of rise Panoras, create dope shit and we do it despite <laughs> all that the adversity right um sure. it's just amazing like and i want more i want more young people that look like us to see those stories know these individuals of course not like back in the day like in history especially in u.s history i'm not sure how it is in the uk but like where there's so many black inventors like the the person who helped create the light bulb was a black inventor but you would never know about them because you know the history books don't talk about them or it's hidden away or you know what i'm saying like the, yeah. the true history isn't told <laughs> but, yeah and i i think times are changing a little bit especially mm-hmm. in the u.s and the uk but most of the time you see professional athletes using their platform to you know boost something that they care about lebron james has his school in the mm-hmm. UK, Marcus Rashford, a football player from Manchester United, big club. He's yeah. helping promote feeding kids who, you know, less privileged during holiday times when school's not around. So it's good that you're seeing these, you know, high profile people get involved. But also mm-hmm. we want to encourage like the everyday guy, me and you type people, you know, who, yeah. who aren't professional sport athletes or anything like that to to use your voice and mm-hmm. build a platform. So absolutely, absolutely. On the right path for that. I think so too. So in this platform too, as we've often discussed, we want to use this to not only do business with each other, but elevate each other. So what is something that you see doing with your brand and what you're doing in the social media space or what are some things you're currently doing and what you plan to do? Give me, give people the breakdown. You know, I, I want to end at the end of the day, I want to have my own company to do social uh-huh. media management, all sort of digital marketing aspects. I want to learn more about the skills I already have and apply that in a business sense to not just help myself, but other people who's gone up and coming. Yeah. You can see loads of people who, you know, have a business or, 
you know, have a good idea, but don't know how to mm-hmm. implement it properly or, you yeah. know, want some guidance on that. And I think that's where someone like me can come and in, get involved and help Absolutely. out. And, you know, I can use you as your case, you know, you know, social media, but you're not a social media guy. And like yeah. you're explaining, yeah, if I can come and help you out, why can't I do that for the next guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that. I love that. So what projects are you currently working on? Where can people find you? Where can they connect with you, get in touch with you? Uh, right now, besides Rosepreneur, I'm just trying to get on more clients for my social media stuff. Best way to contact me is on LinkedIn. It is just Hanny Gabriel. It would be nice. a nice picture of me smiling like that. <laughs> 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 Looking cute. So, yeah, if you're interested, do you have any questions, just hit me up. It's just right. Ladies and gentlemen, so, yeah. if you want this young man, he's not only kind, respectable, he's a forward thinker. He's a pleasure to work with. So if you need your social media management, marketing, all that strategies, hit my guy up, Honey Gabriel on LinkedIn. Honey, I want to leave the people with something good. So let's do this. What's your favorite quote? Oh, that's a tough one. You know, it's, I don't know who or, exactly or, said it. Or something that you live your life by, right? Give me a life mantra, a quote or favorite quote or I a life mantra. Something, something you have to never accept defeat without a fight. Go out never. swinging, try everything you can, throw everything, you know, empty the tank out, do your best. It's the only way you can bet yourself. You have to do it for tomorrow, not today. Nice. So you have to fight, like that. fight for every inch. Fight for every inch. I love it. I love it. Adi, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you, man. I hope our, our internet and disconnected and <laughs> cut off all the good stuff. If not, we might have to record this episode. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good thing we work with each other. So that's doable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was so much good golden nuggets and gems. I don't know how we recreate that magic. But anyways, it's been a pleasure, honey. I'm glad to have you a part of the team and can't wait to see what beautiful things that we're going to create together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and for your talent. I appreciate it. And uh, I can't that's Honey Gabriel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Risepreneurs Podcast. Thank you for taking the journey. Be sure to like, comment, and smash that subscribe button. And stay connected with Terrell on and off the show. Follow at Risepreneurs on all platforms. Do what you love, love what you do. Don't chase the money, let the money chase you.